Hello, my name is Kalti Vasquez, and we are team number four. Our project was to design a power transmission system. Uh, the conditions that we were given by Dr. Tosinoglu was an input horsepower of 10.5, a reduction from 660 to 30, which is a 22 to 1, and that the input direction of the shaft is also the output direction. Meaning when facing the, the surface, they are both spinning in the same direction. Our target applications are lawnmowers, any type of uh, snowblowers or agricultural equipment or any type of recreational vehicle that would require this reduction and this high horsepower. Our original conceptual designs were a worm gear and a helical gear. Uh, we knew that we had the high horsepower and high transmit or great reduction. So we would like to first try out with the worm gear, which would just allow us to have just one worm and one gear, and not have to work with a multi-combinational system, or a multi-state system. Uh, unfortunately, most um, off-the-shelf worm gears are limited to four to five horsepower. It's very difficult to get a higher horsepower worm gear. In addition to helical gears, we couldn't get a reduction the, the reduction that was required unless we, de we designed a transmission system. Uh, our final design ended up being one bevel gear or one spur gear, or pairs, and this, the bevel gear had a 4 to 1 while the, the spurs had a 5.4 to 1. In total, it gave us a 21.6 to 1, not the 22.1 that we were looking for, uh, but the final application was, was met. Uh, the design, the way this is designed is the gear itself has two mounting systems. One is the side of the case and the other one is one that's coming out of the case. It's welded in place and this gear actually moved upwards. The mounting for the second shaft is, an, oh, is a piece that hangs over with four bolts that comes from the side and the mount for the input shaft is one that gets mounted to the side wall. All of the gears can be taken out, or the largest gear, which is the biggest concern, has to be taken out with its original spur, and each of these shafts can be taken out individually. Hi, my name is Eric Sarkar, and this is the force and stress analysis. Uh, we did it in Excel. Now, the force analysis uh, showed that the larger the output here would have the most stress on it. The icon stress analysis also confirmed that, and we initially had a problem where the stress was larger than the allowable stress. And that was when we initially uh, chose the output gear to be made out of cast iron. But we found that changing that the material to steel greatly improved the performance. And the torque, since the, tor the output torque is 4,000 pound inches. And as velocity it was dropping due to the, to the ratio, the WT was rising. So what we ended up doing was the, the last two gears, which are spur, as opposed to the, the pinions, which are bevel, the spur gears and the output have a diametral pitch of three. Uh, this way, the, there's, the teeth are larger, the gear is larger, the output gear is actually three feet in diameter. All right. Hello, my name is Ben Young, and I will be talking about the bearings used in the design. So there were three shafts in total that we used in our final design. The input shaft, the center shaft, and then the output shaft. There were two bearings to hold each, each set of gears. And then the, the, bar, the bearings chosen were ball bearings, and they were manufactured by SPF. Given the values that Eric found for the transmitted loads, I was able to find the C10 rated values based on SKS parameters, which rates their bearings at uh, a million revolutions. So then, given that the, the transmitted load for the spur gears were the largest, the bearings had to accommodate to that large load, so they were larger in bore diameter as well as the shafts as well. This is a cost estimate. Um, we have uh, the gears were all chosen, selected from uh, Boston gear. We have the bevels, which uh, are conveniently in pairs. They cost $345, 
and the Spurs were the most expensive with uh, almost $1,900. Now the ball bearings from SKF were actually not, uh, very economical, uh, 126, 36, and 206, and that's in pairs for a total of $2,600, which does not include the price of the shafts or the price of the aluminum for the casing. Now the maintenance is quite simple for, for this uh, system. We, in order to uh, keep the transmission uh, working properly, we need, of course, to keep it free of uh, the case, free of debris that might get sucked in. Uh, also needs to be disassembled every so often in order to lubricate and clean the parts out. And also, of course, the user needs to monitor the use uh, to make sure that uh, the power, there's no drop in power or unusual noises or excessive vibration that might cause any damage to the, to the system. Okay. These are re some several real world applications as Kyle mentioned. Here's a lawnmower and a go-kart, uh, agricultural vehicle called the harvester, and this is a snowblower. Basically, we would input our power transmission design for in these three, the lawnmower, the harvester, and the, the snowblower, we would use them for the blades, and for the go-kart, we would use it in the engine. So in conclusion, our design given was a 21.6 speed reduction as opposed to the parameter given by Dr. Tosunolu of the speed reduction of 22. This, is a, this gave us an error of 1.8%, which is minimal, and we can approximate an ideal design given our actual final conceptual design. We, generally, we met all the requirements given. Uh, we, trans we did the speed reduction given the 10.8 horsepower. The design is easily assembled, as in the mounting and the assembly take less time as take minimal time. And given that we have various manufacturers and resources such as SKF, there's also Timken, there's Boston Gears, this allowed us to pick out our parts much more easily and much cheaper as well to compare prices. Thank you very much.